All I would have had to do is not give him the option, and it wouldn't have happened. So if I, I, I can't be held responsible. I can't be grieved over something that I caused. I purposely caused something to happen. I can't be grieved over it. Why would God purposely cause something just so he could be sad? It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, Genesis 7, or 6, 7, sorry. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. Man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. So God is going to destroy the creation that he, that he made? He's going to destroy it all? Like, it doesn't really make sense. He's sorry that he made them, yet he knew that this would happen. Like, if, if God knows everything that's going to happen, I think everyone who believes in God would agree with that. He knows that everything that's going to happen. So how could he possibly be like, oh man, I wish I hadn't made them, when when he made them, he knew it would be like that. If he didn't, if he was sad that he made them, why make them in the first place? Because he already knew it would happen. It really doesn't make sense. Uh, Genesis 6, 12. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Um, I think I underlined that one. I don't remember exactly why I underlined all of these. I'm just going off the top of my head, not really scripted here. But I think I underlined that one because it says all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth, which I take to mean all animals, everything. So, but I didn't think animals could choose right or wrong. I thought animals, you know, what they did isn't right or wrong because they're just animals. They don't have souls. They can't choose right or wrong. We can't condemn animals because they don't have the intelligence to choose right or wrong. Um, which isn't to say that what animals do is okay. Uh, it can't apply to humans necessarily. But I was pretty sure that Christians didn't think animals had souls or could do right and wrong. Um, next one I had in line was the next verse, 613. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh. Um, truly can't remember why I underlined that one. Probably just because it says that he's going to destroy everything, and that's pretty uh, terrible to think about. He's going to destroy all of these people. No matter how guilty they all are, still a pretty terrible thing to do. The next verse is Genesis 6.15, which says, This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Um, with these measurements, oh, and a cubit is about 18 inches or 45 centimeters. Uh, with those measurements, I think it would be very difficult to fit all of the animals on the ark, two by two. Um, next verse I underlined was Genesis 6, 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every, short, every sort shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also take with you every sort of food that is eaten, and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. That was Genesis six nineteen through 22. Um... I'll come back to the two of every sort in a second, but I just wanted to clarify that the Bible does say that he took two of every kind of animal onto the onto the ark, male and female. Um, then I also wanted to point out that uh, to store every single food uh, would also be kind of difficult with the size of the ark that he has. Um, so the next one, Genesis 7-2. Take with you seven pairs of of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of the earth. Seven pairs? Well, wait. Genesis 6, 19, two of every sort. Genesis 7, 2, take with you seven pairs. Hmm. That's kind of contradictory um I don't I don't understand that one please ex someone could explain that. sorry about that the camera kind of fell but I'm not going to restart this video because I've been trying to make it for a while now um anyway so someone can try and explain that one to me 
Um, that one, that one's been a difficult one for. I, I can't really understand that one. How you can take seven pairs, but also only take two, one pair. And anyway, uh, Genesis seven five. I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. Um, I think I underlined that one. Just another one. Um, that God sent this rain and to kill things, uh, which is pretty uh, terrible to think about how he could kill all of these people and all of these animals. That's uh, pretty sick to think about, in my opinion. Um, let's see, Genesis 7, 6, Noah was 600 years old. That's just another one I underlined for the ages. Um, Genesis 7, 7, And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives uh, with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds and of, and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God com had commanded Noah. Um, another one, just pointing out, 7-2, take with you seven pairs. Um, but in chapter 6 and later in chapter 7, um, in chapter 7, verse 6 through 9, it says, um, take them two by two, not seven pairs. So, I don't know how that one is going to be explained. Um, Genesis 7-15, 15, 15, again, they went into the Ark of Noah, two and two of all flesh, um, Genesis seven nineteen and the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the the high mountains under the whole heaven uh, were covered. Don't know why I underlined that one. I might think of it later. Let's see. I think I just underlined that one. You know, um, did it really cover like the earth that high uh, in forty days of rain? I don't even know if that's that's possible in only 40 days of rain. I mean, 40 days of rain, yeah. yeah that's a lot of rain um, coming down. But it has to be raining pretty hard to cover the entire earth thousands of feet into the air to cover all of the mountains. Um, yeah, I guess I meant to research the uh, how scientific, how that would even be possible. Uh, but I didn't, so. Oh, well. Let's see. Um, Genesis 8.20 Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And, then, and when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. Um, first off, uh, offered burnt offerings, and the Lord thought that was very pleasing. Um, just seems kind of odd that the Lord likes it when animals are burnt. Um, don't really understand that one. Seems kind of like animal abuse to me. Um, and then it says, I'll never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Um, that, that's kind of saying to me that God's admitting, you know, I can't really hold humans accountable because they just are that way. They just sin. They, you know, I think we can't really hold them accountable because I made them that way. You know, that's just kind of how I made them and that's how they're going to be. Um, and he says, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to strike them down as I have done. Uh, because I realize, and I take that to mean, maybe I was wrong. You know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. That's kind of how I feel like God is thinking at that point uh, from that Bible verse. Like, man, I just struck them down. Now I'm never going to do it again because I can't really hold them accountable. Um, which is another Bible verse for why uh, I may make, I could make an argument that there isn't a hell because God is, say, is admitting that, you know, humans are just evil from their birth. Um, let's see. Genesis 9, 3. Um, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. But later in the Bible, the Bible talks about how um, they, uh, there are restrictions on what food you can eat. 
like you can't eat this type of food and this type of food and that type of food is an abomination so it's just shellfish and Leviticus um, so I mean it must not mean every moving thing because there are limitations but I mean, why wouldn't the Bible just say right there like most of the things but here's the ones you can't eat um, Genesis 9 6 Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Which is basically, like, if you kill a man, they can kill you, someone can kill you back. You know, it's an eye for an eye. You kill someone, you're, you're dead. You know? Um, which I don't necessarily agree with. I don't, I mean, I'm not necessarily in support of the death penalty. Like, why, why... I mean, if you kill someone, that's terrible, of course. But does that mean someone could kill you back? I mean, does 